Hey guys, it's Jess. I'm going to be talking about our content creation gear in a second, but firstly, I wanted to let you in on something super exciting. Canon has come on board as a partner for this video and they are providing us with one Canon M50 mirrorless camera vlogging kit that you guys can win by answering the question in the description of this video. The vlogging kit contains all the essential gear items that you would need to start creating your own video content, including a Canon M50 camera, a Canon lens, a microphone from Rode, and an SD card. So if you are a burgeoning content creator and you've been in the market for a new kit, definitely watch this video, find the answer to the question, and enter. You can enter by leaving the correct answer to the question in the comments below, and then from the correct answers, we will randomly choose a winner. Please read the full description of this video for all the details, including the question, when the winner will be announced, and all that good stuff. Seriously, guys, this is an incredible opportunity, and we are so thankful to Canon for stepping up, coming on board, and working with us. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Hello everybody and welcome back to Orms TV. My name is Jess and this is the video that you guys have been asking for. We asked you guys what videos you wanted us to create for you while we are all in lockdown here in South Africa and basically all over the entire world and by far our most requested video was a video about the gear that we use to make our videos under normal circumstances. We are going to be making another video specifically about how we're creating videos now that we're in lockdown but this is the one about all the wonderful equipment that we use most of the time when we are not experiencing a world pandemic. I'm gonna jump straight in with the camera that we use and that is of course the Canon C200. I refer to this camera as my baby. I love this thing more than life itself, pretty much. Ergonomically, this thing is just flippin' amazing. You know, it's made to shoot video, which cameras like DSLRs and mirrorless cameras are, they're hybrid machines. This is entirely for video production. It's designed for that. You know, you've got all the buttons on the outside, which is just so fantastic because when I'm out and I'm shooting, it's fast paced, it's manic, and I can't can't be wasting time trying to remember, you know, what button I have applied some sort of functionality to to do this thing or going into menus and things to change that. All my buttons for my shutter speed, uh, ISO, etc. All of that's on the outside of the camera. The camera is also extremely comfortable to hold. You know, you've got multiple places and ways that you can hold it if you're shooting handheld. Often I'll be shooting events for Orms and we can be shooting for like three hours straight, often handheld like I mentioned. So it's really, really important that that camera is comfortable and I can support it for a long amount of time. That kind of leads me into my next point because I've mentioned that I shoot handheld like a few times now. And when you're shooting handheld, the last thing that you want is a camera that's really light because you're going to get a lot of like handheld jitter and shake and not in like a good way. It just looks awful. The nice thing about the C200 is it is a really bulky, heavy camera. It kind of weighs itself down, gives itself that little bit of extra stability. Other the things I love. It has Canon's dual pixel autofocus. I can't really be bothering around with focus pulling and messing it up all the time. So having an autofocus system that I can rely on is extremely important for me that I know it's got my back and I'm going to just get the shot straight out of the gate. Built in ND filters. Oh my god. Goodness, if you haven't shot with a camera that has built-in ND filters before, yo, you don't know what you're missing out on. I remember when I used to use my Canon ATD to make content, you have to have variable ND filters that screw on the front. And yes, they are amazing and super useful, but the fact is when you got them built into your camera and you can just press a little button and it does all the magical things for you. It is just wildly easier. Then everything else that we love about Canon systems normally, you know, the incredible menus that are just so simple, all of that is in the C200 as well. Honestly, I even find this camera easier to shoot on than a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. It's just so much more simple. The only gripe I have with this camera is the relatively limited amount of internal recording options that are available. You only really have two, to be honest. There's a 12-bit internal RAW option, and then there's an 8-bit 420 in either a MP4 container or an XF-ABC 
container. And that's sometimes a little bit frustrating, if I'm honest. The nature of a raw workflow is super exacting and it's honestly kind of untenable for us to shoot all of our videos in raw. We'd have to upgrade our entire post-production system then. So there's basically no chance of us uh, using that. Then the only one we're stuck with is the 8-bit internal. And it's fine most of the time. As far as 8-bit footage goes, it is the best that I've ever worked with. However, it would have been really nice to have some sort of in-between. You know, that's something that the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras are doing really well with their raw compression options that are making greater bit depth and things available uh, with smaller file sizes so you don't end up having to change everything around with your post-production workflow and the cards that you're shooting on. So I would have really liked to have something else, you know, for our, our more cinematic creative projects, it would be nice to have other options. I think in the future, we will definitely look into an external recorder that could allow us to maybe output something like a 10-bit 42 ProRes from the C200 and give us that extra little bit of flexibility when we get into some creative grading in post. In case I haven't made it clear enough, this camera though, I love it. It is possibly my favorite part of our entire content creation workflow. And uh, the day that I can no longer shoot in it, I will be desperately sad. Then, time for lenses. So in terms of our main workhorse uh, for glass, we're using a Canon 24 to 70mm f2.8. I honestly don't think there's much that I can say about it that hasn't been said online already. It's Canon Owlglass, so you know the quality is rock solid. Autofocus works really well. Uh, it's heavy, which like I mentioned before with the camera is a plus for me because of how much handheld footage I shoot. F2.8 is also a pretty good maximum aperture for me. I could think of very few instances where I need something that's a little bit wider, so that hasn't been a problem yet. 24 to 70 is also a really great variable focal range for me. I can maybe think of videos that I've needed something of a, with a little more zoom, maybe like five videos. Um, and for that, then I've grabbed our uh, 24 to 105. Canon's got a 16 to 35 mil, which I used to shoot our little GoPro video because we were shooting in a moving car and I was whip panning between Dion and Andre and I needed something quite wide to fit both of them in, but that also had image stabilization, obviously because of the car and the bouncing and the driving situation. If I had any complaints at all about this lens, it would probably be that it doesn't have image stabilization, which would have been nice, but it also hasn't been a major issue for me yet. So that's a really, really minor gripe of mine. Would I always choose to shoot on these lenses? Probably not. I think if I, had all the time in the world to be switching between lenses on a shoot, I'd probably be shooting on the Sigma Art lenses. I've used those before for other shoots and they're honestly just magnificent. I haven't found anything yet that compares to that. However, this Canon lens is what is functional, it works, it gets the job done, it's super reliable. So I have absolutely no complaints about it and how it fits into our creative workflow right now. Then in terms of support for the camera, when we're out shooting, I'm using a Manfrotto 5.6 GB tripod with an MVH 502A head. I think pretty much everything I love about this tripod can be summed up in one visual action. I think that any videographer who's ever tries to use a photo tripod to shoot video will understand why what I just did is so revolutionary, life-changing when you're a run and gun, one man band shooter just out there trying to make videos and you don't have someone to help you set your tripod up. Other than that, not really much I can say about it. It's a tripod, it works, never had a single problem with it, and that is about as much as I could ask for, really. Then, in terms of audio for our videos, I'm using these Sony wireless mics that I inherited from the previous videographers who came before me. Main thing I like about these is they go straight into the C200, which is great because it saves me the hassle of trying to sync up separately recorded audio when we get into post. These ones, like I mentioned, have been around for a lot longer than me, so they've definitely seen better days. I think at the moment they're kind of held together by gaff tape and, uh, and love and hope. <laughs> to be completely honest, I don't know enough about these mics to be able to tell you whether they are better than anything else out on the market. All I can tell you is that they haven't failed me yet, and I think we'll probably be looking to replace them in the next while. So I guess if you have any suggestions for 
some of the products that we could use as a replacement when we do decide that these ones are on their way out, drop that down in the comments below. It would be super helpful to have some recommendations and I'd really like to know what you guys think. Then in terms of power for our mics, we're using these rechargeable Hunnel batteries. They're the same ones that we use in our rental department, which you will know if you have ever rented gear from us. I personally like them because they can hold up to 75% of their charge for about a year, and you can actually recharge them up to 500 times. So that makes them a significantly less wasteful option than disposable batteries. Then in terms of lighting, we're using four LED Godox panels at the moment. I've got one over here and one over here and the other two are in a case under my desk at the moment. To be honest we don't use these lights super super often it's literally just for when we're in the studio and we need to illuminate that sort of setup. We mainly prefer to get outside, shoot outdoors, on location. It's just way more colorful and exciting. My personal opinion, these lights are fine for what they do. They're good at illuminating a scene but they don't give you a lot of room to be incredibly creative or cinematic with your lighting just because of the way they're designed. They're very unshapeable and unless you're gonna do some crazy things with mounting them on a C-stand and positioning them like that, you're gonna really struggle to work with your light. However, like I mentioned, we don't shoot in the studio that much and I've managed to recently kind of find positions where I'm significantly more happy with the way that they work. They also come with some really fun gels, like this blue one over here. So if you're looking for something easy to use, these are definitely fine, but if you need absolute creative control, then I would suggest going for something a little different. In terms of storage and what we're actually recording the videos onto, we use these Sony 64 gigabyte SD cards. Something else I love about the C200 is it's got dual card slots. So we've got two of those guys in there at all times. They're professional grade and they're super, super fast. Like I think they can read at like 260 megabits per second and write at 100, which is blistering. Even though we're only shooting 8-bit MP4s, the file sizes that we're pulling out of the C200 are kind of massive. Something I enjoy doing with our videos is cutting in bloopers and funny moments and you don't capture those unless you're rolling for a long time before we actually start shooting the scripted bits. If you're looking for super fast SD cards that are also incredibly reliable and have never corrupted themselves on me, anything like that, then I can highly recommend these. They are 10 out of 10, absolutely fantastic, love them. In terms of gear, that's kind of it to be honest. Not a super big kit, very, very occasionally I sometimes shoot on a Sony a7 III. When I do that obviously we have to record the audio separately so then I use something like a Zoom H6. But other than that there's not really much else that I haven't mentioned here. I think this is the point in the video where people are probably throwing their hands up in the air and being like but yo girl you know what about the gimbals? What about the fancy rigs? Where are your big external monitors and all of that sort of thing? You're probably not aware of this but I am actually the only person in our content creation team who is almost full-time on just YouTube and just making videos. Andre actually works in our sales department in addition to presenting videos and Dion heads up our e-commerce department in addition to being in front of the camera. And then there's me running around and making all the videos for internal company use. Uh, I also produce the podcast, I write posts for the blog, and I teach at the school. So basically what I'm trying to set up here is that we are super, super busy. And when we need to make videos, we need to do it like lightning speed, fast. If we're like super, super lucky, we can maybe take three hours and go out and uh, shoot something really creative. And the entire 18 months that I've been working here, we've only had one shoot where we've had a full day to go out and make a video. Actually, I lie, we made two videos that day. Also remember, a lot of the time we're dealing with uh, new camera gear that comes out and it's hot, in demand, everybody needs to have it. So manufacturers can sometimes only supply us with a new piece of gear for a couple of hours and that's 
all we've got start to finish to make something. Basically, what I'm trying to say is we need to be ready to get out there and shoot in literally minutes. Grab the gear, grab the guys, jump in the car and let's go and make something. So in other words, I don't have time to be faffing around with gimbals and hooking up external monitors or anything like that. I need to have my camera ready, all the pieces put together, just pick it up, plug the mics in and let's go. What we have works and works for us. That is the other important thing to note, I think. This is our setup. This is what we found works best for us and our channel and the way we make content and all of the constraints and limitations that we have. It might not work for you at all. That is very, very possible. We're just sharing all the wonderful gear we have that allows us to make the fun videos and live our best creative lives. You probably also noticed that in this video, I didn't cover anything to do with our post-production setup. And that's because I actually want to make a separate video about that, you know, about the headphones and my custom built editing PC and all the other fun little gadgets and things that uh, I use to edit the videos. So if you guys want to see that, give this video a like and I will spend some time scripting that and putting it together. I tried to keep this video super, super non-technical. So if you do have very technical questions about the cameras or the mics or the lights, the tripod, anything like that, just just leave it in the comments and either Dion, Andre or myself will get back to you with all the answers about that. We genuinely do love interacting with you guys. So yeah, don't be shy. Drop a comment down below. That's all from me. I hope you guys are staying indoors and safe and with your families. And we will catch you guys in the next video, which should be coming out really, really soon. Cheers.